In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the fat line in the mask editor. But before you watch this lesson, be sure to watch the creating a mask lesson beforehand before doing this one. So we'll move on now. I'm going to uh, use this particular image here as my example because it's a good way of showing you how to use the fat line. Now the fat line is just a way of creating a mask. If I come up here to my mask tools and click on create edit mask, I'll just resize it to suit our viewing area. Okay. Now over on the left hand side here is our fat line control. Okay, so what we can do here is we'll zoom in. We'll just start off with this head area here. And I just want to create quickly create a mask around this area here. So I'll click on the fat line tool and you see I get some options up here. And these options include the fat line radius, in other words how wide the fat line is. And this, this sets how smooth the fat line actually creates the mask. Okay, that's between the foreground and the background. And this button here flips the um, the uh, fat line from going one direction or the other direction. But I'll explain that as I do it. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a fat line. Now all a fat line is, if I left click here and I just click as I go along, all a fat line is is a curve that we're using to create a mask. That's basically it. And if I zoom in a bit closer to there you can see what's happening here. I've got this curve going around with these nodes here. Now the key to the fat line is not to have it too, uh, not to have the radius or have it too thick so that it doesn't start including a lot of different colors here. You just want to create a mask around the actual colors of interest. So we can cr make it a little bit thinner by doing this. And the other tr uh, secret or trick with it is to make sure that the actual nodes are positioned just on or just on the on the better side or the side of the foreground as you can see here and that way it'll retain the foreground more for you. Now you can use this pan here just to pan around a little bit to get the right position and you can bring the nodes back around like this so I'll bring the nodes there and I can just continue it on like that so I want to get this part of the bill here and once I position that to where I sort of want it there like that I'm happy with that. I can then just zoom out a little bit using my scroll of my mouse there. And what I do now is I can click on this node here, left click and hold down my mouse and drag out and as you can see it creates the area that I'm going to uh, add to the mask. So what I do now is I just click apply and you can see what it's done. It's basically applied that mask or that area to the mask there that I just created using the fat line. And that's a very easy way of creating a mask uh, that's sometimes quite difficult to do otherwise. And if I just go to mask view, you can see what it's done there. Okay. And to clean up that in there, I just use the magic brush in there because it's a little bit more intricate. And, um, you know, each tool is designed to do a particular job. In this case, let's quickly come in here with this tool here. And as you can see, I can quickly add to that and finish off that part of the mask there. And I can just zoom out, yes so. And this area that I've caught in here, I can just go to my eraser and I can right click to remove it from the mask like that. And these are ways we can develop our um, our mask effect. Now, another part of this duck which is difficult is in this area here, because we have colours that are sort of blending into each other, as we can sort of see underneath the water of the duck here, and it's not really clear where the mask should be. Now if I use the uh, magic brush to do that, you know, it sort of it sort of does it, but it's not really clear and it's not a sharp edge that we might actually want in this particular example. So this is another area where the fat line can actually become quite useful. So I'll just get rid of that mask that I just created then. I'll zoom out a little bit now, and this is where I'll use the um, the fat line a little bit more, and I'll show you why it's quite a powerful tool in this situation as well. So I click on the fat line and I just rough in roughly where I want to go. And here I can sort of decide where the point is of where I want to mask out. It's sort of up to me where I want to do that of course because it's, it's always dependent on the artwork. And I can just move these nodes to, to the positions I want to put them, as you can see here, just like that. I can sort of get it to the spot I want to get it. Now you'll see that the red line here is on the wrong side. 
if I create the mask here, that's not what I want to do. That's 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 the wrong thing to do. I shouldn't have undone that. What I want to do is I want to actually uh, bring the mask on the other side. So what I need to do is flip this like this, and I can bring this out like this, as you can see there. And now when I apply this, you're going to see that it's applied like in that position there. Now the smoothing is probably a little bit too too much smoothing here, so I'll just undo that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just turn the smoothing down a little bit, down to say 0 0.05 there and click apply. And that's probably more what I'm looking for. I can do it the opposite way. I can, I'll just click undo first. I can actually give it full smoothing. And then I've got this effect here. So it's always the case with artwork. What you're trying to mask, what you're trying to achieve is always image dependent or, you know, artwork dependent. And you can use these tools in combination or on their own to create particular effects you're looking for. And, you know, I recommend that you do spend time just experimenting with some of these tools to sort of get the effects you're looking for. Here it's quite a straightforward situation. I just put the nodes just on the side of the foreground that I want. Um, I'm quite happy with the thickness there. Drag this out like so. Be careful not to bring into the uh, to this area of the image here. Click apply and now I've got that there. Now if I go into this view here you can see how smooth that is because I've got it set to 1. If I click undo here and I say bring that right down to nowhere near as smooth and click apply and I go into this mode you can see it's not quite as smooth and if I take that to an extreme and have no smoothing and click apply you can see how rough it is there like that. So then I can use these smoothing tools to smooth that out a little bit and I can sharpen it up. So a combination of sharpening and smoothing I can sort of achieve the, um, the mask that I'm really looking for here. So I might smoothen the whole thing a bit and then sharpen it back. And you can actually use these in combination to get the desired effect that you want. And if I zoom right to all now, and I've just got this little end part here to finish off. So here I might just use my magic brush just to quickly rough this in just for the sake of this lesson without going you know, to laborious lengths of showing you. I just want you to understand how that fat line worked or see how it worked. Um, it's one of those things that it's it's a little bit hard to explain something like the fat line in a uh, in a static help file. You can't quite explain it as well as you can by showing you in a video like this. So if I zoom to all now, I can go to my eraser and make it large like this. Whoop, I went a bit too far. Undo like this, and I can just quickly knock out these areas here, as you can see. I can look at my mask like that and I can just see if there's any spots I've missed, which clearly I have just there. And without going too far with it, I've now done that and I can click accept. And now I've brought in my image there using the fat line and some of the other tools as well. And they, they do work well in combination with each other. And that's how the fat line works. And that's the end of this lesson.